G'day, John Canny here. Finally got to drive the Ineos Grenadier, the test track of the RACQ in Queensland, four-wheel drive uh, uh, training track. Um, so I'm going to take you with me on that drive today in this video, just show you what Ineos are offering in their test drives. And in the second half of the video, I'm going to just go over a few of the features of the car and make a few comments about that. So, uh, hope you enjoy it. Please subscribe. Let's go for a drive. My name's John. John, lovely to meet you. We've Jared. got Jared in the back. Jared, how are we going? Good, thank you. Okay, guys, just take you through some of the features of the um, PTO2 here. It's a prototype vehicle. There's going to be warning signs coming up, there's going to be bells, there's no airbags, there is no um, ABS, there's no traction control. But it allows us to come to have customers come along to actually experience what we're doing. Customers don't normally see prototypes, let alone drive one. Yes, we appreciate okay. that. No, that's fine. Um, like I said, you will see warning lights, there will be warning signs coming up, don't worry about it. Um, have you driven a BMW before? I have a BMW. Okay, so you know the controls. I know that. Brilliant. Okay, so I won't thing. talk you through that. Now, the one thing I will talk you through is um, we will be using manual. It hasn't yep. got sport on it, it's just manual. Yep. We will be selecting neutral, and that is for the transfer box. Right. Okay, so it's a two speed transfer box. We have no synchros in the transfer box, so it's always done in neutral, standstill. Right. Okay. To actually do the actual transmission, you lift this lever up, it will actually then bring it over into high range. It's a permanent four wheel drive, but it's in high range open at that stage. High range lock is on this side. Low range lock is down on your uh, corner here and then locked, unlocked. So the unlocked low is for like doing uh, renewing caravans or boat trailers in. It just allows you that. So it's a two speed. So basically end up with um, 16 gears. 16 gears. Okay. Um, we will be doing manual mode as well. So when you select into manual mode, you can actually put it into first gear. It will not up change the gearbox to you command it. Right. Okay, it has to have that command. So we will be using um, high range and low range and in manual as well. Okay. okay. Happy with that? Yep, absolutely. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to drive out here, we're going to go into the sand. Um, we'll just do that in permanent four wheel drive. We're not going to put any lockers or anything like that in there. We won't be using any um, front and rear lockers. It's just the centre. Right, okay. All right. Sounds so, great. So if you want to put it in, put your seatbelt on yeah, the back. Yeah, I've got cool. my seatbelt on. So we're just, just, put we're just putting it into drive. Yep. Cool. We're going to go around to our right hand side. And brake off. Do you do much 4 by 4 or? Yeah, mainly overlanding. Yep. I'm not a, a great uh, you know, driving over huge rocks and things. We're going this way. Yeah, going down here. But uh, yeah, I've done a fair bit. Cool. So this is just a nice little route. So nice and slowly. Um, getting used to what the vehicle is and the brakes and the accelerator. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be turning left in a second, so start setting ourselves up yep. and we'll start turning in about now. So look at what we've got, there is uh, ruts and stuff like that, and washouts. Yep. So what we're demonstrating is what the vehicle's about. We've got some articulation going on, we're actually seeing the suspension working with the seats as well. So we're going to be going through a nice little crossing here, so it's 400mm, uh, wave depth of this is 800mm, that's 5 minutes uh, static, 25 minutes dynamic. Right. It will have a pungent smell of this, and it's normally the person sat in the back. <laughs> we'll be going round to our right hand side. Yep, yep. up the top or just, just here. Right. Some nice, like gnarly roots, um, ruts, and washouts, just as we go up here. So, normally, what you do, you actually look at your pathway through and then you yeah. pick where you're going to go in. So, mechanical sympathy. Yeah. Right, let's go. You can put it in the dips if you want, just to feel what it's like. Just yeah. do it nice and slowly, so it's um, mechanical sympathy. Yeah. Like I 
said, it's all about the suspension complemented with the Recaro seats. And that's front and rear. Be fun in the back. Good. Certainly feels comfortable going over all of these uh, yeah. ruts and bumps. These seats are yeah. terrific. They were good. Suspension. Good Great. So as you can see, I've got an instructor next to me. He's uh, telling me how fast to go, what to do, where to turn, all those sort of things. And I'm fine with all of that. Didn't get to drive this vehicle uh, on road, so I've got no idea what it's like, but it, it, it felt pretty good off road. Didn't get a chance to really put my foot down or anything like that, but there seemed to be plenty of power and reserve there. So uh, I reckon it'll be pretty good. So stop. If you put the handbrake on for us, okay? If you want to put it into neutral, just push it, just literally push it forward. Yeah, brilliant. We're now going to lift up and we're going to put it into low range lock. Right, low, so up. to me, yeah, up. to me, and then put it straight down. Nope. Okay, cool, nope. that's cool. Okay. We're now in low range center diff locked, right, and it also it says it's in low there, right. We're now going to select drive, and now what we're going to do, we're going to push it. Just remember, this has no electro stability control, right, it has no ABS and stuff like that on this vehicle. Put it over into manual. We're now in manual first gear. This will not change gear to you command it to. Right, okay. okay. What we're going to do, we're going to walk this down, so off with the handbrake, you're going to straighten the wheel up. Yep, and we're just going to let it and take itself down. You're going to walk it down on engine braking. So we're going down a fairly steep little curvy hill here and it's certainly doing a good job of it. My feet are off all the pedals, the car is doing its job. demonstrated like we're just in that manual so if you wanted to just pull it back over into drive literally as you're going on just pull it across that's it we're back into drive so still in low range yep and we're going to walk all the way through so we've done the deal downhill descent and now we're going to do the ascent right. so we're going to come around to our left hand side okay that's impressive so what we're going to do, we're going to walk through, you can see the cones, we're going yep. to walk out there and then it's going to be a left again. So you can see the bollock where we're heading to. Oh, yes,
Okay, so another issue that's come up uh, in quite a bit is, of course, the footwell. Now, I forgot to think about it, to be honest, and it certainly didn't feel unnatural to me. Uh, I only drove the car for a quarter of an hour or so, and I had no problems whatsoever with it. You know, maybe a 10 hour drive might be different, but I doubt it. I don't think it's an issue, it's certainly not an issue for me, and uh, I'm not worried about it. So here we are with the Grenadier, okay, so I've just had a drive over a fairly gnarly course, okay, we're going slow and, and, and an instructor next to us telling, telling us what to do, but it, there were some significant uh, climbs and ruts and different things, boy, I was really impressed, not only is the car comfortable, it's quiet, unbelievably quiet in there, and uh, Geez, it's going to be really capable. This car doesn't have any of the uh, diff locks or anything like that in it. And most of the time we were traveling in straight uh, four wheel drive high. And yep, look, it did a great job. I'm so excited about this car now. Just can't wait to get it. It's, it's everything I'd hoped it to be. So we're going to have a closer look at this one. And as, uh, as I said, the steel bump uh, uh, bull bar on the front here is uh, really neat. It's, sits in the, the bull bar sits in nicely it's uh it's strong absolutely going to do what we want it to do and uh just enhances the front of the car in my opinion so under here we have the uh, the winch um and i have ordered the winch in my car as expensive as it is i still think it's worthwhile and i'm told there are some tweaks to the suspension um that go with getting the winch. So if we look underneath here, there's nothing much hanging down there. It's pretty clear. These bumper bars, steel, are great. Okay, I wanted to stop the video here just for a moment to talk about this color. This is, the, the color that, of the vehicle that you just saw is the Scottish white. Now, I've had a lot of white cars and uh, I thought, no, I'm not going to get a white car and I've gone for the Donny Gray. But if I'd seen this Scottish white, I would have saved a few bucks and certainly considered uh, going for this. It's not white, it's a beautiful, rich cream colour. So if you're considering uh, the Scottish white and you're arming and arming a bit and thinking, well, maybe it looks a bit ordinary, it looks beautiful. I tell you, <laughs> it looks beautiful. Steel wheels and the side steps on there. Rear suspension. And of course the roof rack, which looks actually really smart and really strong. The trouble with it for me is why I'm reconsidering the roof rack is that it weighs 60 kilos. To stop the video again here, I wanted to talk to you about this roof rack situation. This is a Rhino Rack roof rack, okay? The issue with it is that it weighs 60 kilograms. Now, it looks strong, it looks great, all those things, and it probably is, and there's lots of uh, accessories for them. <sighs> the trouble that I have is that any of the clamshell type rooftop tents are about 90 kilos plus. So you put 90 kilos onto the 60 and you're up right on that 150 uh, weight limit for, for the roof. Now, that's on the proviso that the roof rack itself will carry 90 kilos because these Rhino racks have two uh, capacity ratings, one for sealed roads and one for it once you get off the sealed road. And sometimes it's a reduction of up to 50%.
so I'm told. Now, that's a serious issue. Maybe this roof rack will or won't take a rooftop tent, if that's what you're thinking. If you're not thinking about that, it's useful for other things. But the option, of course, is a couple of the bars that they're offering, and we're going to have a look at those shortly. But a couple of rooftop bars are going to be a lot lighter. Uh, you can still put a, a clamshell type rooftop tent on there and you can load uh, some additional stuff on some of these rooftop tents they've got provision to carry stuff on the top so I think that's where I'll be going but at this stage nobody can give me a rating for this rhino rack so we'll wait and see anyway let's have a look in the back well it's quite cavernous in here plenty of room and Geez, these surfaces are great, especially for me with my uh, two large dogs. Um, Grenadier Automotive. That's a bit khaki, and I'm hoping that's uh, going to be improved a bit. But yeah, plenty of room. So we've got the double doors, single door closing down, and the side door. Uh, recovery points on both sides uh, exhaust pipe both sides this power here I believe is the equivalent to a uh, equivalent to a Anderson plug positive and negative and of course the 12 point plug over here so all good protection underneath so now we have a look at this magnificent interior this is what we all love and I tell you what this one's got leather seats so we won't be having leather seats <laughs> so what's it feel like nice comfy Fortunately, I've got my son Jared here with me and uh, he's been enjoying it too. Hopefully getting a little ride. This one's got the uh, You know this special leather steering wheel and stuff on it's the This is the field master. I would suggest But yeah beautiful No carpet required on here. That's for sure Back seats Plenty of room. Jared, would you like to adjust that seat to suit you? You're about, what, six foot one, aren't you? Yeah, not quite almost. Yeah, and uh, fairly solid young man. <laughs> so put the seat, put the seat back up to where you would have it. Yeah, everything's mechanical on this. <laughs> Okay, you want to jump in the back, see how much room you've got? You've got plenty of headroom, that's for sure. Now that's with the seat right back. Jared's about six foot, six foot one. How are you off for space there? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good, plenty of headroom, yeah, enough for your knees. Room, yeah. Seat's comfortable in the back too? Yeah. Beautiful, fantastic. So here we are in the blue, we've got the 18 inch mag wheels on this one with the Bridgestone tyres. So this is definitely the field master. Whoa, look at this with the white and uh, grey leather seats. This is kind of a luxury version, it's got the roof, uh, roof hatches in it. Now I haven't ordered these because they're not the sort of thing that I think would be useful in Australia. Glove box. Pretty tiny. Okay, not even carpets in this one, but mats. Again, bull bar on the front. Hmm. It does look rather smart though, if you're looking for a luxury version.
Geez, those doors close nicely. Yeah, you know, these are the bars. And here's your option to the roof rack, and they look pretty bloody solid, I can tell you. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. It was a useful uh, or interesting video anyway, so uh, I'll, uh, I'll have plenty more once I get hold of this vehicle, that's for sure. So uh, please subscribe, and I appreciate you watching. Bye for now.